Hey everyone! Let's take a look at how Tailwind 2 simplifies enabling extra variants in your config file. We have an interface with three cards here, and each card contains an input field and a button. The buttons have different styles on hover and also on focus. We also applied some styles for the active state when the button gets clicked, but at the moment nothing is happening. The button is definitely not turning green when pressed. This is because out of the box, the background color plugin in Tailwind doesn't enable the active variant. If we look at the default variants reference in the Tailwind docs, we can see that this specific plugin supports responsive, dark, group hover, focus within, hover and focus. The active variant does exist in Tailwind, but it's not enabled by default in the background color plugin or any other plugin for that matter. So, in our Tailwind config, let's go in the Variants object and declare that for the background color plugin, we want to enable the active variant. Cool, now our button is turning green on click, but we have lost the other states. The button doesn't change color anymore on hover or on focus. This right here is something that would confuse a lot of users. By defining an array with the active variant only in our config file here, we have effectively disabled all the other variants that were enabled by default. We have replaced the default array with this array, which contains a single variant. The proper way of adding extra variants is to make sure we bring along all the default variants for this plugin. Let's grab the whole contents of the background color array here and paste it in our array here. Wait, what? Now our hover and focus styles are back, but the active styles are gone again. Well, turns out that the order in which the variants are defined in the array matters, since they dictate in which order the class names are generated in the CSS output. Variants defined last get generated last in the CSS file, and therefore win the specificity battle due to the nature of the cascade in CSS. In our case, the active variant is defined first here, so other states like hover, defined later, will take precedence. If I open up the dev tools and turn on the active state, you can see it's still working. But if I also trigger the hover state, the hover state styles take over. Now, let's grab our active variant and move it to the end of the array. This time around, our active styles are the ones that prevail when both states are triggered together. Well, between having to bring in all the existing enabled variants and having to define our variants in the right order, enabling extra variants felt a bit cumbersome. Tailwind 2 brings a new extend key within the variants config object, which similarly to extend in theme, lets you, well, extend the variants that are enabled for a given plugin. Let's delete all this, and inside the extend object, I'll target the background color plugin and extend it with our active state. Nothing else, just the active state. The hover state works, the focus state works, and the active state works. Tailwind has taken care of merging our new variant with the existing variants for the background color plugin, and made a sensible decision as to where in the variants order our active variant should be placed. Behind the scenes, Tailwind maintains a recommended sort order list in the default config. If you feel like you have a good reason for it, you can modify this sort order by defining a variant order key in your config and bring in the array from the default config, which I'm doing here. You can see in this list that our active variant is defined right near the end and before the hover variant which is why our button turns green on click. If we were to move the active variant before the hover variant here, our hover style would override the active styles once again. Okay, let's bring active back to its original position and comment out the whole variant order key for now. Let's take a look at another example. I'm going to add some hover styles on the card itself now. Whenever a card is hovered, I want to make it scale up to 105% of its size. Now, when a user focuses on the input field or button within a card, I want to make the card even bigger. I'll make it scale to 125% of the original size. Since we want to do this when elements within the card are in focus, we need to use the focus within variant here. 
As you can see, it's not working. Once again, this is because the focus within variant is not enabled by default on the scale plugin. Let's enable it in our config file. We'll extend the scale plugin and define an array with focus within. Let's try hover and now focus. And yep, it's working. Our card is scaling up to 125% when an element within it is in focus. Cool, but there's something a bit weird here. If I bring my mouse over and hover the card, it jumps right back at 110%. This is kind of odd. I think I'd prefer if the card just stayed scale up as long as the focus is within it. I hope you guessed it, this has to do with the order in which the variants are defined. If we uncomment our variant order array up here, sure enough, the hover variant is defined after focus within. I could fix this by moving the focus within variant after the hover variant. And that would do the trick. Now, hovering a card which has element in focus has no effect. The card stays scaled up as long as one of its elements is in focus. But here's a word of caution for you. By changing the order of the variant order array in your config, you're making a decision that affects every single plugin in Tailwind. A decent amount of thinking went into deciding what the default order of these variants should be. And chances are, more often than not, you'll want to be able to override the focus within styles with hover styles and not the other way around. Before committing to changing the variants behavior globally, consider that you can always go back to using the original approach and define your variants directly within the variants object. Considering the card scaling up on focus within sort of an edge case, I'm probably better off leaving the variant order array alone, grabbing the list of variants for the scale plugin from the default variants reference, moving my scale key outside of the extend object and directly onto the variants object, and add my default variants before the focus within variant. In summary, the new extend key in your Tailwind Config's variant object makes it much easier to enable new variants without breaking or removing any of the existing functionality. It lets you stop worrying about which variants you need to bring in and rely on sensible defaults instead. When you've got some very specific edge case needs, you can always use the original approach and enable variants outside of the extend key.